hello dear students today i am going to teach you the chapter number first the name of the chapter is transpiration from subject plant physiology at sy bsc the chapter number 4 transpiration is belonging to the credit number first today i am focusing on the topic introduction definition of transpiration types of transpiration and structure of stomata firstly we see here introduction all of you know the plant absorb large amount of water from soil by roots and this water absorbed by the green plants utilize only a fraction of 1 to 2% this 1 to 2% of water it is utilized by the green plant performing the various biological activities while most of the water is near about 98 to 99% of the water is lost in the form of water vapor this 98 to 99% of water it is extra water and this extra water is a lost from the aerial surfaces of the plant aerial surfaces of the plant like as leaves then green herbaceous stem fruit flowers in the form of vapors this is called the transpiration see the transpiration it is nothing but the loss of water in the form of water vapor through aerial surfaces of the plant it is a phenomenon of water loss from the plant body a large amount of water is lost from plant by transpiration process i am focusing here some example the first example here the crotularia gestia losses here near about 27 kg of water in its life cycle of 4 to 5 months then another example is here a maize plant zea maize transpire about a barrel of water in its life of a few week then another example a breech tree the botanical name of this plant is butia pendula with 2 lakhs leaves trans transpire about 300 to 400 kg water during the summer in a day whether a beech tree there is a fagus salivatica losses near about 75 kg of water per day during the summer then beech maple forest of 400 to 600 trees evaporated uh, near about 20000 barrel of water per day and see this data regarding to the loss of water it's indicate the physiological importance of transpiration in the life of plants and thus during the transpiration water is lost in the form of water vapor see here in this diagram there is general process of transpiration is shown see during the day okay sunlight fall on the leaves leaf surface it is absorb that heat from sunlight and whatever water is present within the leaves that mesophyll cell water it undergoes the heating of water and that water it is converted into form of water vapor and through that the surface of leaf there is a presence of minute opening it is nothing but the stomata and from that stomata there is a water loss takes place water evaporates from the leaf surfaces then this process is known as transpiration see here the continuous absorption of water takes place by the root and this water 
travel through the plant okay through the stem then it's provided all over the aerial plant parts and see there is a continuous water loss is there in the form of water vapor and there is a continuous absorption of water is there see the water absorption process it is directly proportional to the transpiration process transpiration is more then water absorption is also more see this is this diagram is uh, it is uh, generally uh, shows the process of transpiration see in next we focus here the definition of transpiration here i am giving here the 2 to 3 definition of transpiration first definition transpiration may be defined as the loss of water from the living tissues of aerial parts of a plant in the form of water vapor see this is the first definition then second definition the loss of water in a vapor form that means the gases form from the aerial parts of the plant is known as transpiration see the third definition water is lost from a plant primarily in the form of vapor through a process known as transpiration see here the question is asked define transpiration or what is a transpiration okay you can give any one definition among that three definition of transpiration then see the next here uh, figure number 4.2 it shows the demonstration of transpiration experiment see the evaporation of water from the plant is known as a transpiration transpiration is giving of of water vapor from the internal tissues of the living plant through the aerial parts such as a leaves and a green shoot and a large amount of water is absorbed from the soil by the root and only small amount of water is enters into the composition the photosynthetic product and maximum water is lost by the aerial parts of the plant in the form of invisible water vapor this evaporation of water from the surface of the aerial parts of the plant is called as a transpiration all of you knows this concept of transpiration now then see the transpiration is a not purely physical process but transpiration it is a vital phenomenon which is regulated and controlled by the living cell see here the transpiration may be demonstrated by keeping a potted plant see this is the potted plant is there and this is the bell jar okay this is the glass bell jar is there and under that glass bell jar there is a potted plant is kept then this transpiration may be demonstrated by keeping a potted plant under the glass bell jar the soil in the pot is a watered and the pot is a covered with a rubber or polythene sheet see here that pot is a covered by the polythene or with a rubber sheet to prevent the evaporation from the uh, prevent the evaporation from the soil water after some time drop, drops of water will appear on inner surface see this is the dots of water it is appear on the inner surface of the bell jar and this water has come from the aerial parts of the plant see this is aerial from that leaves there is water vapors uh, water vapors comes out and that water vapors trap within this bell jar and this water vapor uh, when it's uh, cools down and it's converted into the water droplets means it is a proof that there is what the transpiration takes place through the aerial plant part through that this small demonstration of transpiration experiment then see the next this is very important part see 4.3 the types of transpiration the transpiration it's having a three different types 
first cuticular transpiration, second lenticular transpiration and third stomatal transpiration. See here the we can focus here one by one. First of all I am focusing here the cuticular transpiration. See when the water is a lost water is a loss through the cuticle is known as cuticular transpiration the loss of water vapor through the cuticle is known as cuticular transpiration see do you know what is a cuticle see this is cuticle see in this diagram see this is a blue green color it is a cuticle and see this is the epidermis okay over the upper and lower epidermis of the xerophytic plant it's having a cuticle this cuticle, it is a nothing but the protective layer of a waxy lipid-like substances. It is a cutin and this cutin on the outer surface of the aerial parts of the plant. And see this cuticle is a mainly prevent the loss of water from the plant. But water is a lost through the some Cracks are there over the cuticle. See this waxy cuticle it is a hydrophobic and it means to check the transpiration. How here water can diffuse through the cuticle particularly when the layer is a very thin or it has cracks in it. Then through that thin layer and through that cracks water get evaporated. See up to 20% of the total transpiration may take place through the cuticle. And heavy cutinized plant surface shows the reduce the rate of transpiration. See, the cuticle thickness is a more than the rate of transpiration is a low. When the cuticle thickness is a less or reduced, then the rate of transpiration is high. See, the plant exposed to the sunlight have a thick cuticle, while the plants in a shaded areas have the thin cuticle. See. Then xerophytic plant specifically it's having a very thick cuticle to avoid the transpiration. See this is regarding to the cuticular transpiration. See here the short note is asked on uh, this topic. Okay cuticular transpiration short note it is asked for either 3 marks or it is asked for either 4 marks. See the next that is a lenticular transpiration. See when the transpiration takes place through the lenticel is called as lenticular transpiration. First of all here I am focusing here what is a lenticel. On the stem surface there is a small lens like openings are present on a stem. It is a nothing but the lenticels. See this lenticular in woody plants after the secondary growth takes place the epidermis is replaced by the cork cell. See this is the epidermis after secondary growth this epidermis get ruptured there is a formation of secondary tissues or secondary uh, cell there is a specifically the development of the periderm and that periderm it is a nothing but the cork cork it is a called the periderm see this is the brick like cells are there that brick like cells are nothing but the periderm cell or cork cell this periderm whose outer layer is a consisting of the dead cell it is a nothing but the cork tissues thus lenticels are the slit in the bark of the woody plant see there is a lens shaped slits are there okay and this lens lens uh, like slits in the bark of the woody plant which are filled with loosely arranged cells. See there is a loosely arranged cells are distinctly seen. These loosely arranged cells are nothing but the complementary cells are there. And see through that this loosely arranged cell com complementary cell the lenticular transpiration occur in the stem of woody trees and fruits. See it is uh, the loss of water through this lenticel. The amount to about very negligible amount is there 0.1% of the total loss of water and hence it is a quite very negligible. Okay see this is regarding to the lenticular transpiration.
Then the third type, there is a stomatal transpiration. The loss of water vapor through the stomatal pore is called the stomatal transpiration. The stomata are minute pores cheaply situated in the epidermis of the leaves. Stomata present on the epidermis, lower epidermis as well as upper epidermis. They are also found on the epidermis of herbaceous stem. Those plants are green herbaceous stems. On that stem surface, there is also presence of stomata. The opening and closing of the stomatal pore is controlled by two specialized cells that specialized cell are called the guard cells. That guard cells, they control the mechanism of opening and closing of stomata. Maximum diffusion of water vapors occurs through stomatal pore which is equivalent to about 80 to 90 percent of the total water loss through this stomatal pore. It is a very high amount of water loss through that stomatal transpiration. Then, however, the stomata occupies only 12% of the total area of leaf and these leaves are the organ of the plant through which maximum transpiration occurs and stomata constitute the main pathway of transpiration. See, generally, here the number of stomata is more on lower surface of the leaves and the number of stomata is higher on upper surface of the leaf. But in a monocot such as a grasses, they are equal in a number on upper epidermis as well as the lower uh, surface. In aquatic plants such as a pistia is there, ecornia is there, they are present only on the upper surface of the leaves having a stomata and the stomatal transpiration is the lowest when stomata are fully closed and it rapid or very high rate when the stomata are fully open. See the stomatal transpiration. See this is the upper epidermis. See this is the cuticle. Okay. And see this is the lower epidermis. There is a lower epidermis. At that uh, lower epidermis there is see lower epidermis is not continuous. Lower epidermis ruptures at various sites due to the presence of stomatal opening. See here, these are the mesophyll cells. Mesophyll cells have having a 90 to 95% uh, of water is uh, present uh, within that mesophyll cell. And when the water, sunlight is a fall on this leaf surface, then the water presence within the mesophyll cell get heated and water vapors are formed. That water vapors are uh, gathered here in a air cavities okay collected here in the air cavities and when the stomata when opens then these water vapors comes out to that stomatal pore and it goes into the atmosphere okay see this is regarding to the uh, TS of the typical leaf showing the movement of water during the stomatal transpiration see then here uh, in a B diagram is there Okay, stomata on surface you see these are the stomatal pores are there. Okay, and this stomatal pore, okay, these are the kidney shaped guard cells are there. And around the guard shell, there is a subsidiary cells are there. Subsidiary cells are also known as the accessory cells are there. Okay, then see in next slide here, the structure of stomata. We focus here. The see this is the structure of stomata. So the question asks, give the structure of stomata with the help of suitable diagram. It is asked for long answer question or write a short note on structure of stomata. See the structure of stomata. Stomata are minute pore or it is a microscopic pore surrounded by the two specialized epidermal cell called the guard cell. All of you focus this diagram. All of you see this diagram. See, see this is the stomatal pore or it is also called the stomatal aperture. Okay. And this stomatal aperture is surrounded by the kidney shape or bean shape guard cells. Okay. The 
in the first category the guard cells are kidney shape okay the kidney shape guard shape guard cell are specifically found in a dicot stomata they have an elliptical shape with a pore at present its center this guard cell may be surrounded by epidermal cell see this guard cell then further surrounded by this epidermal cell this epidermal cells are called these are the special epidermal cells are there and these special epidermal cells are called subsidiary cells the other category of stomata is a typically found in a grasses specifically in a monocot plants and few other monocots such as a palms okay it's a type in this type the guard cell have a characteristic here the kidney shape guard cell are there but in a monocot stomata the guard cells are specifically dumbbell shape guard cell is there with a bulbous end and it is a characteristic feature of that stomata see this uh, stomata uh, when we focus on the stomata each guard cell contain the nucleus see there is a distinct nucleus is a present in each guard cell and these guard cell lining of the uh, layer of the cytoplasm see within the guard cell there is a cytoplasm is present at periphery centrally there is a big vacuole is there okay vacuole then periphery there is a protoplasm or cytoplasm is there and within that cytoplasm there is also presence of chloroplast and having a single nuclei they contain a large amount of protoplasm than their neighboring epidermal cell the inner wall of the guard cell see this is the dark black and color inner wall of the guard cell it is a uh, thicker while the outer wall it is a thinner okay the inner wall of the guard cell it is a uh, non elastic and it is a very thick okay see this is regarding to the structure of stomata see the last part of our today's video lecture the expected questions on this topic whatever we covered here first category of questions are short answer question it is for one mark questions what is a transpiration define transpiration and list various types of transpiration then second category of question long answer questions it is asked for four marks or it is asked for six marks explain structure of stomata with a suitable diagram you draw the well neat label diagram of stomata okay for diagram it is for two marks and the explanation regarding of that diagram description detailed description point wise it is for two marks okay when it is asked for four mark question then describe different types of transpiration okay you give here the cuticular transpiration lenticular transpiration and stomatal transpiration then short note it is asked for three marks structure of stomata then lenticular transpiration stomatal transpiration and cuticular transpiration okay see this is regarding to the expected question arises on this topic whatever we covered in today's video lecture in next lecture we focus on mechanism of opening and closing of stomata we will see in next video lecture thank you